Good evening, friends and family, and welcome to our 2021 Christmas program at AEMC. Because of COVID, it's been a couple years now since we've met for an in-person Christmas program. As last year, we were totally virtual. But even still, this program tonight will be unlike the Christmas programs that we've had and become so accustomed to over the last many, many years. This year, we sit in family groups, six feet apart from others. We wear a mask, and it just isn't the same. Things have changed. But the Christ child that we worship, born in Bethlehem, has not changed. And the unchanged story is as beautiful and as wondrous as ever. Perhaps with all the gloom and negativity in the world, there is an even greater need for a good news story such as this Christmas story. Part of this program has been pre-recorded and will be shown on the screen up front. But part of it is live as well. There is no choir. There are no refreshments. But we still have our own nativity, a traditional candle lighting at the conclusion. And yes, there are candy bags. That's been the biggest question. <laughs> we are so happy that you have come to join us in our Christmas program tonight. So let us get to it then, shall we? Friends, we hope you enjoy tonight and our 2021 AEMC Christmas program entitled The Wise Christmas.
My name is Akeem, and I'm a shepherd in Persia. I spend a lot of time in the hills tending animals, and one of my favorite pastimes is sitting at the fire at night listening to stories told by visitors and relatives. The best stories are the ones my two uncles tell about their amazing trip before I was even born. It took a very long time. They traveled a very long distance, and they followed a moving star to get there. They also went with one of their Magi friends in the three journey together. My uncles are very smart, educated men who spend time learning about star formations. They are called Magi because they are so smart and wise, so wise, and actually give people a lot of advice, even kings and leaders. A few years ago, they were doing the usual activity of searching the skies, and they saw something really different. It was an extremely bright display in the sky, and they couldn't tell if it was one star, few stars, or a planet. They got really excited and studied it each night trying to track it so they could draw it in their charts. Because my uncles are very wise, they tried to follow God's plans for them. It was very clear that they should pack supplies for a lengthy amount of time and travel to pursue this phenomenon in the sky. They believed that God was telling them to do this and that the star would lead them to the Messiah. They even called this star the Star of the Kings of the Jews. Oh, good. I was afraid the lights wouldn't come up. <laughs> uh, we need to stand to sing together, O oh, Holy Night.
going, Mr. Wise Guy? Hello. So it seems your nephew, Akim, wants us to write down the adventures we had on our big journey. He wants to make like a journal or something for people to read. Well, I guess we won't always be around to sit around and tell our stories. Maybe it's a good idea. Yeah, it really was an incredible journey. It took so long. We had to bring so many different things. Man, the number of camels we needed for that stuff. Whew. So many camels. So many wagons. So many supplies. A moving star. So many camels. Yeah. Now we certainly need to stand again and take some deep breaths.
Please be seated. Our other Magi friend is not very keen on joining us, but once he saw how cool that star was, he was in. That star moved as if it was showing us the way. It was unbelievable. Stars don't do that. It's as if it moved and waited for us through the whole journey. Exactly. And then we had to decide on gifts to bring for the King of Kings. Like, what do you even get? Uh, for me, uh, thinking about it, you know, gold was an obvious choice. The family would need to buy things. Mm -hmm. I decided myrrh because of its value, its healing properties, and its fantastic smell. I didn't realize till much later that Jesus would have myrrh as part of his burial. Nicely done. That left our Magi friend to decide on a gift, and he chose frankincense, representing royalty. Pretty cool gifts, I'd say. All right, now it's story time, and I have chosen to tell you guys a story about Christmas, and I'm very pleased that we can do this without a mask on because I have my granddaughters with me here tonight, Michaela and Maya. And the story I'm going to talk to you about is this. Have you ever heard of Ebenezer Scrooge? Have you? Yeah. Kind of a scary story. It's a scary, scary movie to watch. So here's the book, and it was written, it's called A Christmas Carol. Now we often think of a carol as something that we sing, but this is a, called like a Christmas story. It was written by Charles Dickens in about 1840 something. And we are introduced at the very beginning of the story to a man called Ebenezer Scrooge. He was a man of business. He had a money type of business. He was an accountant. He loaned out money to people. Money was everything to him. He was not a very nice man. He was a shrewd businessman who disliked people. He was extremely unkind. And he became very wealthy through his business dealings at a time when there were so many people who were living in poverty, so poor. He was very, very rich, and he kind of held on to every penny that he had. He cheated people. He did not care if anything bad happened to those people. He had no friends. He didn't want any friends. He was mean and nasty. No one really liked him. He never helped anyone who may have needed help. He was stingy. He had a nephew that asked him to come to Christmas for Christmas dinner, and he turned it down. He's, he did not like Christmas at all. All that was impo important to him was his money. The more he had, the happier he was. And he would never even think of giving any money to the poor. And the thing he absolutely hated most, you know that was? Christmas. He hated Christmas. If anyone said Merry Christmas to him, at the very beginning of the story, we meet his associate worker, the man that he paid very little money to to help keep the books in the company, and that is Bob Cratchit. He wouldn't even let Bob Cratchit put much, of, much coal in the fire because Ebenezer Scrooge was so cheap. He lived alone, and the story starts on Christmas Eve. He goes home all by himself because he lived alone. Nobody would have him. And he lived in the dark and the cold because that was cheap. Because coal costs money. Light costs money. And he was so stingy, he just lived in dark, cold house. So, as I said, it was Christmas Eve. Everybody else was celebrating. All the other people were happy and merry, but not this guy. He was home alone. And as he was home, 
as the story goes, he was visited by the ghost or the spirit. Now, we have to remember this is a made-up story. But he was visited by the ghost of the man who he used to work with, his business partner, Jacob Marley, who had been dead for seven years. And Jacob Marley appeared, he came right through the door without the doors even opening, and appeared before him, and he was awful looking. He had a long chain with treasured uh, money boxes and treasure chests that he had to pull all through life. And he came to warn Ebenezer Scrooge. He said, if you don't change your ways, you will have a long chain like this too with all these money boxes. And after you die, you'll have to carry those all through eternity. And you've been working on this chain seven years longer than me, he said. Yours will be heavier and longer than mine. Well, Ebenezer said, but Jacob, we were, we were men of business. We were good businessmen. He said, no, he said, mankind should have been our business, not just getting as much money as we can. So anyway, he had come to warn Ebenezer Scrooge and to change his ways, or he'll end up the same way as, as Jacob was. So he told him, you're going to have a chance. You are going to be visited by three spirits tonight at midnight and at one o'clock and sometime later. These spirits are going to come and be with you. The spirits were the spirit of Christmas past, the spirit of Christmas present, and the spirit of Christmas to come. Ebenezer was scared. He didn't want to have anything to do with this. So he made sure all the windows were shut and the doors were locked, and he went to bed. But the spirit still came. The first spirit took Ebenezer back to his childhood and showed him when he was kinder and more thoughtful of others. It was a time when Ebenezer was happy. It showed him playing with people. It showed him um, dancing at parties. It showed him... Um, when he worked as a young apprentice in a shop, and how kind his bosses were to him, not like Ebenezer was to his workers in, the, in this day. But soon it also showed that the love that Ebenezer had for people soon was replaced with the love for money. His girlfriend, who he was engaged to be married to, actually gave her ring back because, as she said, you have another love, and it's money. And the Bible talks about the love of money being the root of all evil. And we see that, that uh, Ebenezer Scrooge was becoming like an evil person. The spirit of Christmas present showed Ebenezer how his horrible way of living affected others. Not that Ebenezer seemed to care very much. It showed him people who knew Ebenezer who talked about him being so mean and nasty. The spirit of Christmas present showed him the house of the man who worked for him, that of Bob Cratchit. And they were having a very, very simple Christmas dinner because they couldn't afford much more because Ebenezer Scrooge did not pay Bob Cratchit very much money. They also had a son. They had about five children, Bob Cratchit and his wife, and Mrs. Cratchit. But one of their, their tiny son, Tiny Tim, was lame, and he did not look very well. And Ebenezer Scrooge asked the spirit, what's going to happen to Tiny Tim? And the spirit said that none other of mine that come later will see him. In fact, I see a cane or a crutch standing by itself in the corner. So if nothing happened, the boy would die. The last spirit was the spirit of Christmas to come. This spirit showed what life was like for Scrooge in the future. There were a lot of extremely poor, very poor people 
who, who lived without any hope. The spirit showed a housekeeper who was selling things that she got from a house where a man had died. Nobody cared about this man. Nobody cared that this man had died. Ebenezer thought that the things that this lady was selling might have been his things. Then the spirit took Ebenezer to the home of Bob Cratchit. It was an extremely sad home because Tiny Tim, the lame boy, had died. There wasn't enough money to help save him. Scrooge pleaded with the spirit and asked him if these things he is seeing in the future could be changed. The spirit spoke no words at all. Finally, the spirit took Ebenezer to a graveyard, to a cemetery. It was so cold and dark. And he pointed to a stone. And, be, and he, he told Ebenezer to wipe the, the, the snow off the stone. And Ebenezer said this. Spirit, he cried, tight clutching at his robe. Hear me, I am not the man I was. I, I will not be the man I must have been. Why show me this if I am past all hope? He says, I will honor Christmas in my heart and try to keep it all the year. I will live in the past, the present, and the future. The spirits of all three shall strive within me. I will not shut out the lessons that they have taught. But the spirit disappeared, and Scrooge was left. He wiped the snow off the gravestone, and his own name was on it. Ebenezer Scrooge woke up. He was holding on to his bedpost. And he, he saw that he was back in his own room. And that these three spirits had done all this in one night. He promised that he would change. He realized he wasn't dead. That the spirits had done it all in one night. He realized the whole thing was a dream and that he can really change. He accepted the invitation for dinner with his nephew. He gave people money who needed it. He walked through the town, wished Merry Christmas to everybody. He was a changed man. He became the most famous, the happiest, and the most generous man in town. He gave Bob Cratch a raise and said that he would help Tiny Tim. And Tiny Tim did not die because Ebenezer Scrooge helped him. So Ebenezer Scrooge said he would honor Christmas. And we can honor Christmas too, each of us. Because you see, if you live Christmas, you live the birth of Jesus Christ. Christmas is Jesus' birthday. And and that's God's love and generosity come down at Christmas time. Jesus came to change our lives, just as Ebenezer Scrooge's life was changed. So let us always remember to love others, to be generous with what we have, and to generally care for the welfare of other people. And with that, I leave you with the five most famous words spoken in this story by Tiny Tim, and God bless us, everyone. Thank you.
time for us to sing again. many camels we kept our eyes on the star it stopped and started and gave us direction and then finally stopped right over the place where Jesus and his parents were living the night sky was unbelievable no other star has ever been like that hmm and after our long journey we came face to face with Jesus the Messiah King of the Jews Emmanuel the one who came to take away the sins of the world it was incredibly humbling that visit will never be far from my, our memories. Herod sure wanted to get rid of Jesus. He was so jealous. Mm -hmm. God certainly directed us to leave going by another route for that long journey home with all those camels. <laughs> but we worship the King Jesus, the Messiah. What a journey. So many camels. You may remain seated if you like.
And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God onto a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou art highly favored, the Lord is with thee, blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. The angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in their womb, and bring forth a son, and shalt call his name Jesus. He shall be great, and he shall be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. 
and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom there shall be no end. Then Mary said unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And Mary said, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make a public example of her, was minded to put her away privily. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife. For that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. For he shall save his people from his sins, from their sins. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world shall be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went out to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea onto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were, in that same country, shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye, sh ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly... There was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now even on to Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known to us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there, became, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. 
When Herod the king heard these things, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. Then Herod, when he had called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child, and when you have found him, bring me word again that I may come and worship him also. When they heard that the king, when they had heard the king, they departed, and lo, the star, which they saw in the east, went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy. And when they came into the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. Part of what we have heard tonight has been told to us through the eyes of the wise men or their descendants. Can you imagine what that was really like? Visiting the Christ child with their gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Can you imagine being in the fields as a shepherd tending your flock when suddenly there was a heavenly host and a subsequent visit to a manger? Can you imagine what it was really like in the stable? Can you imagine a world without Jesus, our Savior? The good news is is that we don't have to, because the reality is, is that the prophecies were fulfilled and Jesus was born. God in the flesh, born into a world of darkness. Jesus came and became the light to a world much in need of a savior. And that light is needed now in 2021, perhaps more than ever before. Every Christmas, we light candles, both to show the light of Jesus through us and to share love with others. I'm going to ask our candle lighters to come forward now and visit each of our groups here tonight. Let us light our candles and share that light with the person next to us as we sing together, Noel, Noel, Jesus is born, Noel.
Have no doubts. Jesus was born as our Savior in Bethlehem. As the angels appeared to the shepherds, they declared peace and goodwill toward men. May we strive to keep that peace and goodwill and give glory to God in the highest, not just during this Christmas season, but throughout each and every day. May you hold fast in your hearts to the spirit of Christmas and with your lips praise God for his grace and mercy extended to us through our Savior and King, Jesus, who came to us in such a lowly and humble way. Please extinguish your candles carefully, and I now ask you to stand as I conclude this program. Before we conclude, I want to thank uh, everyone who's taken a part in this tonight. You can see from the videos that there was a lot of pre-recording going on, and I really want to thank the techies for coming in, not just the, the, the two or three at the back, but others that helped out for all those who came uh, through the week to get recorded, to June, who's put this all together. I think like that's the 32nd time or something like that. But anyway, yeah. Out in the foyer, there are some chocolates for everybody, some candies, but there are some candy bags for the school-aged children, so I'll just let you look after those yourself. Let's just praise before we leave, or pray before we leave, and praise. Father, we thank you so much for this, another Christmas program that we've been able to give glory and honor to you. Lord, where would we be without Jesus? And we just praise you, Lord, that we don't have to answer that question. We thank you, Lord, that the prophecies were fulfilled and that there are still prophecies to be fulfilled. Lord, bless us. At this time of year, we ask particularly for safety, and with all that's going on in the world, we need that even more. Lord, bless us as we leave this place. May we go proclaiming Jesus as Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. Thank you.